In June of last year, I published a video addressing Red Hat's decision to close off its source code, affecting the distributions based on Red Hat, or as it's officially known, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This created a crisis for those distributions and threw up a challenge to uh, Red Hat's claims of being a truly open source Linux operating system. One of the distributions I mentioned in that video specifically was Rocky Linux. At the time, they did not see it impacting their development, but didn't have a long-term strategy for continuing to be bug-for-bug -bug compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Rocky Linux has been my preferred rail alternative, uh, or fork, if you will, since the announcement of the end of life of CentOS back in 2020. It's been about 10 months since I made that video, and I thought it'd be a good time to revisit the topic of compatibility, of Rocky Linux's compatibility, compatibility with rail. Uh, this is B from Taytalk Deck, and today, I'm going to be discussing Red uh, Rocky Linux and its compatibility with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so stick around. I have a favor to ask. If you like this type of video and want to see more content like it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button for notifications. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you like it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, or if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or emotional outbursts down in the comment section below. And lastly, stick around all the way to the end to get the most out of this video. Uh, let's do this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and just shrink myself down here. Got some stuff here on the on the screen. So, all right. So Rocky Linux was actually founded by Gregory Kurtzer. Um, I'm not sure if that's how you uh, say that, but um, he was one of the actual original Cent OS founders, um, you know, back in the day. Uh, and, you know, and it's actually Rocky Linux itself is actually run by the uh, Rocky Enterprise Software Foundation, which is what you see right here. Um, one of its biggest backers is a company called CIQ, who offers open source enterprise solutions to companies featuring Rocky Linux. So this is something that's very similar to what to what Red Hat does with their own product. And we can see here that you know not only are they backed by CIQ, uh, but also 45 Drives, AWS, Google Cloud, Open Drive, Rakuten, Symphony, uh, VMware. So they've got some pretty big they've got some pretty big sponsors um, behind them now. The goal of CentOS and then Rocky Linux was to build was to be bug to bug compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, as not all um, customers were able to afford the Red Hat support. CIQ is to Rocky Linux what IBM is to Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but it honors the the law and the spirit of open source. You know, and that was one of the big controversies about this decision was is hey, like, are they really respecting the actual open source spirit? Um, of you know Linux, you know by putting theirs basically behind a paywall. Now Rocky Linux is not only supported by CIQ, but it's supported by those uh, those sponsors that I also mentioned uh, just a minute ago. Now a day after my last video, back in June of last year, Rocky Linux released a post on their website confirming their commitment to maintaining compatibility with Rail, and we can actually see that here. It was published June 29th. 2023 and i'll make sure to put all of these links down in the um, down in the show notes below so you can go ahead and look at these at, at your leisure but um so what they um in this in this post that they released is they they wanted to accomplish uh, maintaining this compatibility um by using what are called red hat ubi um which are just containers running Red Hat Enterprise Linux um, and pay-per-use cloud instances. Um, there was also an article from Linux Yak, which you've, if you've um, seen quite a few of my videos, uh, I've actually referenced this like this site before, and they do a great job of putting out different Linux news. This 831 2023 um, article, Rocky Linux stated its commitment to be one-to-one -one compatible um, with and be a drop-in replacement for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. In the same article, I contrast the difference between one-to-one -one compatibility and bug-for-bug -bug compatibility. Now, essentially, the difference is bug-to-bug, -bug, I'm sorry, bug-for-bug, -bug, that is a hard thing to say. For bug-for-bug -bug compatibility, it is exact. So basically, it's it's the exact same thing, drop-in replacement, can't tell the difference. Um, whereas one-to-one -one is they're interchangeable, but not exactly the exact same. So that's 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 just kind of a summary of those differences. And depending on you know your use cases, that could be something that impacts you. I as far as my use cases go, I don't see the you know I don't really see a significant difference here because it's like you know hey like you know if it's like it's like having Ubuntu right like you have you have the the actual spins, but then you have other ones you know like your your spins are going to be the ones that are officially endorsed by Ubuntu and are officially based on they meet certain criteria. They're basically just Ubuntu with a different desktop. 
uh, environment. So those are more like bug for bug compatibility ish. And then you look at something like uh, Linux Mint, which is also based on Ubuntu, but you know they don't they don't do everything exactly the same. You know, so you may be able to make the case that are in, in Linux Mint's case that it may be only one to one compatibility, but most of the stuff that you can do on on Ubuntu, you can also do on Linux Mint. So that's that's to kind of give you a little bit of illustration as far as um, the difference, in, you know, in a real life example. But um, there was also this Rose hosting um, article from 3.8.2024. Um, and it lists Rock, it lists Rocky Linux as having bug for pug compatibility. So really at this time, it's really, it's really up in the air, whether it's going to be one-to-one -one compa compatible or, um, or, you know, bug for bug compatible, you know, and that's, it's just, it's really, really, it's really, really murky, but you know, one of the things, one of the things that is, is really reassuring at this point is that they are really trying their best to be the you know basically still that that original fork that they were initially before Red Hat decided to shut it down and you know and they're gonna and you know I personally just for a lot of my use cases I cannot tell the difference but keep in mind I am not an enterprise I am one guy making YouTube videos in his living room so um, that is something that you'll have to take into account for your own cases but you know just even going back with my my experience with Linux you know just using you know, Linux Mint versus Ubuntu, you know, I really haven't noticed significant differences. Yeah, like, you know, when we're talking about, you know, app packages versus, you know, snap packages and stuff like that. Yeah, of course, there's going to be differences there. But for the most part, like the experience is relatively the same, um, you know, at least as far as I go, you know, and, and I would be okay with, if I, you know, if I, if I had to go from using, you know, Ubuntu to Linux Mint or Linux Mint to Ubuntu for the most part. So, um, but yeah, but as far as as far as my own experience using Rocky Linux, I haven't actually noticed any kind of issues. Um, but again, I'm not an enterprise, so that's something that you're going to have to take into account for yourself. Evaluate your own, um, evaluate your own situations, and see you know if this is something that you would like to use as an alternative. Because it's great. Because the the great thing about using you know these Red Hat enterprise derivatives is that the knowledge base for Red Hat is 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 extensive like when you go to red hat's website they they just got a plethora of information for all the different versions of of red hat and, it, and it's just it's it's so amazing because i've used that really and i've done videos on it in the past too about using red hat's re, uh sources you know even even not not only using them in red hat but also using them in you know other distributions because you know for the most part linux is the same regardless of the distribution you know, yeah, of course there are there, there are differences in different package managers and and and, and things like that. Maybe the, the networking's implemented differently. Maybe files are in slightly different locations. But for the most part, at their most basic level, you can usually get um, you can usually use those for you know not only Red Hat but also other distributions and things like that. And and the thing is is also you know even um, even using Rocky Linux is they have a pretty great knowledge base and it's growing and it's growing and you know they've got they've got corporate company backing you know to them so that gives me a lot more reassurance you know because you know we aren't going to run into we're not you know we're, they're not as likely to run into a situation where they're financially hurting you know because they're you know f five developers you know in four different corners of the world you know trying to keep up with this distribution that these companies are running on and there are projects out there like that and they're those are great but the problem is is it's like you know if you look at it behind the scenes, you know, it's almost like some of those are, are hanging on by a shoe, like a shoestring, you know, and, and anything could just could break that at any point in time. So, you know, that's 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 that that's something that would be of concern with me, you know, but, you know, looking at something like Rocky Linux and its compatibility, at least as far as everything that I do and the way that I see it is it looks like it's actually going to be pretty. Um, it's going to be a pretty good alternative to Red Hat Linux now. I just wanted to give you an update on the Railhead source code situation and just tell you a little bit more about Rocky Linux. You know, Rocky Linux is great. There's also Alma Linux, which you can actually see here um, in this in the header of this article. There's also Oracle Linux, which is also based on Red Hat, and they've all kind of taken their different um, approaches. I believe that um, Oracle is still going for bug for bug, and I believe that Alma made a pretty early on decision that they were going to be one to one compatible with Rail. Um, but again, make up your own mind here. Um, yeah, so not only do they have their own guides, but Rail has their own stuff, as I said. So, you know, you get double the support. Uh, make sure to check out uh, the other videos from my channel. Remember, mistakes are going to make you better, so keep on making them. Thank you so much for watching my video, and have the greatest of days. 
Oh yeah, and I'm only holding out to get to 10 minutes. So have a great day, guys.